Welcome to City Church. We are a biblically based, relationally driven, spirit led church, encouraging everyone to follow Jesus, grow together, and serve others. We're excited to share this sermon with you today, and you can always find out more about us online at citychurchseville.com. Well, good morning, everyone. If you are newer to City, maybe this is your first morning, you would not know this, but this service is the flow of it is a little bit different than normal. Um, this is Vision Sunday, and it's a Sunday that I am very excited about, and uh, every year I look forward to this as I serve as the lead pastor here at City Church, where it gives me an opportunity to talk about what we've been praying about, thinking about, and planning for for several months behind the scenes as we look forward to 2025. So what we're doing, by the way, is this is part of a sermon series that's entitled Letters to City. And so much like the Apostle Paul wrote letters to churches in the Newer Testament, those women and men that are part of our preaching team are bringing, prayerfully bringing together sermons that they're preaching and bringing to us as a church family. And so again, this morning, this message is all about Vision Sunday for 2025. Now, before I move towards the message, um, how many of you at times can be forgetful? Those of you who didn't raise your hand, you forgot to do it. <laughs> Go ahead, raise your hand. It's being forgetful. By the way, if you didn't raise your hand, just turn to the person sitting next to you, and if they know you, they're probably going to say, get your hand up. You, you're, you're more forgetful than you think. But oftentimes, um, as one of the lead preachers here at City, I often kind of lift the hood on preaching a little bit so that you all know what preaching's about and how we do things oftentimes. People will ask me, Pete, how do you write your sermons? Well, there's a preaching book that is one of my favorites, and it's called Preaching is Reminding. Preaching is Reminding. And the subtitle to it is this, Stirring Memory in an age of forgetfulness. So oftentimes, if you're sitting through a sermon and you go, I think I heard this before, guess what's good about it? It's reminding you, and a lot of preaching is reminding. Now, with that said, I want to remind us again, Zoe already led us through this in the announcement video, but I wanted to remind us again that here at City Church, we are a biblically-based relationally driven, spirit-led church, calling people to follow Jesus, grow together, and serve others. Biblically based. Biblically based simply means that this text, this book, this Bible, reveals to us the story of God in the world. It's what it means, biblically based. Relationally driven means this. If you read this text, you read these scriptures, you know what you're gonna discover? Is that from cover to cover, it's trying to teach you that relationship's the most important thing in life. Jesus was asked a question once in the Newer Testament, and the question was this. Jesus, what's the most important law? There are 613 laws by the end of the Older Testament, and Jesus says this. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbors, as your, your neighbors as yourself. And if you do this, this sums up the law and the prophets. In other words, what Jesus was saying was relationship. Relationship with God. Relationships with people. Most important thing in life. So biblically based, relationally driven, and spirit-led. Now before we move to spirit-led, I want you to take a moment and look around at your neighbor. Let's go ahead. Your neighbor. Look at them. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Some of you are thinking, I wish I had sat somewhere else <laughs> because I just looked and I saw my neighbor. Maybe as couples, you were on the way to church this morning and you had a, a disagreement. By the way, in marriage, Christians never have fights. They just have disagreements. But you had a disagreement on the way to church and you're looking at them and they're looking at you and, oh, I got to love my neighbor. But the Bible teaches us the relationship is the essence of life and loving your neighbor is yourself. So biblically based, relationally driven, and then spirit led. You know what's really cool? Is that God has sent his spirit to help us to do this. 
That's what it means to be spirit-led, that God has sent his Holy Spirit to help us read this story biblically based, relationally driven. How many of you know relationships are not easy? You notice that? By the way, if you think they're easy, ask the people that are in relationships with you. They'll tell you it isn't, you know? Now, with all of this said, city churches relationally driven, biblically based, relationally driven, spirit-led, calling people to follow Jesus. You see, Jesus lived the story of this book. He lived it. And if he lived the story, we're called by God to follow him. So follow Jesus and then grow together. Just so you know, biblically speaking, together is always better than alone. Biblically speaking, together is always better than alone. So follow Jesus, grow together, and then last but not least is serve others. Serve others. Now, I was at an event this week that was excellent. There was a lady who's a New York Times bestseller, and she was giving a talk at the school where my kids attended, and so Franny and I were invited to go to the talk, so we did. And while we were at the talk, the lady who was giving the talk, we'll we'll say that her name was Kelly, because it's Kelly. Her name's Kelly. And her last name is Corrigan. Her dad was part of the athletic department at the University of Virginia. I'm sorry, her uncle and I knew him relatively well. And so we went to hear Kelly Corrigan give this talk. And near the end of her talk, she said something, and you could feel the people in the crowd inhale when she said it. Here's what she said. She said to this crowd, if you are struggling in life, if you have not found happiness, she said, I have nine words that are going to help you. She said, make yourself useful Do hard things with good people, and it'll help to turn it around. She said, make yourself useful. Do hard things with good people. Now, when she was done with that, a young lady who was at the talk that attends City Church, she came up to me at the end, and we were chatting and kind of catching up a little bit. I hadn't seen her in a little while, and what she said was, she said, Pete, wasn't it amazing what she said at the end? I said, yeah, it was awesome, and she quoted it to me. Make yourself useful. Do hard things with good people, and she quoted it to me. And she said, Pete, you know what was amazing? Is when she said that, I thought of the vision of City Church. She said, I thought of that. Follow Jesus. It's not easy. Grow together. Serve others. And I went, that's awesome. And I gave her a high five and a hug, and she walked away, and I thought to myself, I'm the pastor of the church, and I didn't catch that. (laughs) It's literally what I thought. I'm like, yes, high five. I didn't even think of that. Felt a little ashamed in the moment. But the truth of it is, this reality that we're talking about, it works everywhere. It really does. And so we're going to begin this morning's message like we do every single Sunday. And that is, I'm going to ask that you would stand with me And as you stand with me, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer out loud together. But I want you to catch something in the Lord's Prayer. There are nine pronouns in the Lord's Prayer. They're plural. There's nine plural pronouns. So before we pray it, and it begins with our Father, I want you to look around again at your neighbors, just real quick. Because when we pray this together, We are praying this as ours. This then is how you should pray. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth in Charlottesville as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Turn, give your neighbor a fist bump, high five, hug, or a handshake. Take a couple moments to greet one another.
You may be seated if you're not seated already. So since preaching is reminding, here we go again. City Church is a biblically based, relationally driven, spirit-led church calling people to follow Jesus, grow together, and serve others. Now again, this is Vision Sunday. And so as we look towards 2025, what we're going to focus on is a church family is grow together and spirit-led. Here's why. For the past two years, ultimately, we've looked at one thing. The kingdom of God, what is it? The following year, how do you live in it? An entire year on the kingdom of God, what is it? The past year is how do you live in it? So there's been a lot of activity, a lot of serving. One of the incredible things about City is twice a year on a Sunday morning, we send hundreds of people to go arm in arm and shoulder in shoulder with secular and sacred entities around our community to see God's kingdom come and his will be done on a Sunday morning. It's awesome to watch. But that's a lot of action. So over the next year, we are going to focus on grow together and spirit-led. Grow together and spirit-led. Here's a thought. Grow together. The people around you in this sanctuary are among the greatest of gifts God has given to you. I want to say that again. The people around you in this sanctuary are among the greatest of gifts that God has given you. And what I want to say emphatically is this, is that when a church gathers, when city church gathers, it's like no other gathering. No other gathering is like it. There is a difference between when a congregation gathers and other groups gather. There's a huge difference. Now, let me explain. This week, my wife, who's Italian, loves Andreas Bocelli. She loves him. I think in my home, he might be the fourth person of the Trinity. I'm not sure. But I mean, it comes very close. My wife is a huge fan of Andrea Bocelli. So next up on the screen, you're going to see another fan of Andrea Bocelli. That's our dog, Banks. She's a blue tick coon hound. By the way, notice she's a UVA fan. She's got a Virginia collar on. That's very important, very important. But here's what I'm getting at. Every time we leave the house, including right now, every time we leave, my wife will put Andrea Bocelli on the speaker because she once heard someone said, if you play music while you're gone from your house, your dog will be comforted. So this dog knows every Andrea Bocelli song there is. It plays between five and 10 hours a day on loop, literally on loop. This, guy, this dog is a massive fan of Andrea Bocelli. Now, with that said, how many of you know there's a movie in the theaters right now, and it's Andrea Bocelli's 30th anniversary? Have you heard about this? Okay, I heard about it for like weeks before it came. And so we went to see Andrea Bocelli in concert, and it was truthfully awesome. I sat there and listened to duets that he sang that were stunningly beautiful with Ed Sheeran and Shania Twain and other people. It was powerful. As a matter of fact, every once in a while, when that guy hits a note, you get a little tear in your eye, you get goosebumps, you get a little emotional. That happens in church too. There are times where you get a little goosebump, maybe a tear in your eye, but there's a fundamental difference between being in the theater watching a 30th anniversary concert of Andrea Bocelli and when the church gathers. There's a big difference. And the reality of it is, the difference is, is that the church is supposed to be spirit-led. It's supposed to be spirit-led. Now, City Church is a spirit-led church. Spirit-led simply means this. As a follower of Jesus, God gives each of us the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
each one of us. Now, here's what I know. The moment we begin to say that we're going to take a look at grow together in spirit-led, I know there's people sitting here that think to themselves, I don't want to deal with the Holy Spirit. And here's why. Because some of us, like myself, have had experiences in the background of my journey with Jesus where Holy Spirit stuff and really strange emotional stuff happened. Strange stuff happened. Now, here's what I want to say. The Holy Spirit leading our lives and working in and through our lives, it's not about seeking and looking for some dramatic emotional reality. That can happen, though, when God touches a life. What it's ultimately about is receiving God's power to do this thing we call follow Jesus. And by the way, How many of you know sitting here, if you're in a committed relationship, when God calls you to love that person as you love yourself, you need the power of God to do that? How many of you know that that's true? Am I right? Now listen, if you don't think you do, I want you to now look at the person you're in relationship with and they're thinking to themselves, I desperately need the power of God to deal with you. That's what they're thinking. Paul writes, in him, meaning Jesus, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So the intention for every church is that people would gather together, be joined together, to be built together, and that literally becomes a temple in which God's Spirit dwells. That's what Ephesians 2, 21 and 22 say. Well, what we're going to do in 2025 is we're going to take an in-depth look together as what does it mean for us to be built together in this temple, to be brought together so that God's Spirit dwells among us. The other thing that we're going to be looking through is the Gospel of Luke in the book of Acts. Because in those two books, the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, one-third of the Spirit's mention, almost a third in the Newer Testament, is found in these two books. And so what we're going to do as a church family is we're going to walk through the book of Luke and the book of Acts in 2025. But what I'm going to ask that you would do is would you grab this sticker that was on your chair? It says 20, 21. Because in Ephesians 20, 21, the text teaches us that God desires to dwell within us. Now, maybe you're not like me. I am not a sticker guy. This is my water bottle. It's a Yeti water bottle. And I put 2021 p.m. on it. We're going to get to that in a moment. But I'm not a sticker guy. But I like people who are. Here's why. When you pull up at a red light and someone's got the back of their car covered with everything they believe, it's fun to sit there and read what they believe. I don't have enough guts to do that because if I put a Jesus bumper sticker on my car and they'd been following me, it might not actually work out real well. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You, you, you want to put pray for me instead of I follow Jesus or whatever the case may be. Now, with that said, I'm not a sticker guy. But I put this sticker on the water bottle that I'm going to be holding every day. And here's why. Because it is true. And the Asian intellectual needs to know that we serve a God who comes in spirit to fill us. And we're in a church where all of the leadership prays constantly that we would be filled with the Spirit as a church family. But what I want you to do is you're holding this sticker. I want you to hold it knowing that we've given this to you to pray over your own life too. 
And as we talk about putting feet to your faith in every sermon that's preached at City, we have what's called feet to your faith. How do I walk this out? What I've just heard, how do I walk it out? What does it look like? Well, as we talk about grow together and being spirit-led, I want 221 to become very familiar to you. Because Ephesians 2.21, remember, preaching is reminding. Some of you have already forgotten. Ephesians 2, 21 through 22, in him, Jesus, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Now, here's what I know as the pastor of city. Can I make a confession? Probably most Sundays out of the year, I really love to be in church. But maybe just like you, there are Sundays where I get up and I say, honey, man, I just don't feel like going to church today. And she'll say, you're the pastor. You need to get to church. And here's the reality, and every pastor will confess this to you. Here's what happens. You get to church. Maybe you have had a heavy, heavy, burdensome week. And what I do in the first service every Sunday is I go up into the balcony and I hide in the back right corner. And every time I do that and my week and life has been burdened, I will sit in that corner and by the second worship song, your worship has stirred my soul. It has stirred me. When we gather to worship, And people gather in this room. I've had a burdened, heavy week. And when I sit up there and I look down and I hear you all gathering to worship and opening up your heart so that the Spirit of God fills the house, I will tell you, it encourages my soul. It encourages my soul. But in this text, it also very definitively, as we put feet to our faith, says, you too. And in the Greek, That's singular. The rest of this passage is about all of us, but the you too is a singular pronoun. And what it's doing is challenging me and you to be a people about 221. A people that recognize that we're called to do it too. And talking about being spirit-led for this message, I had the clearest sense that when we got to the point of you too, There are some of us sitting here that are going, I'm kind of cool with everyone around me doing the Holy Spirit thing, and not me. And many people, when they have a rebuttal for the Spirit, will think the following. Spirit of God makes the natural kind of off kilter. And maybe at times, maybe you've met someone that was kind of like a Holy Spirit person, and They just didn't deal with reality very well. I'm going to promise you that's not the Holy Spirit. You know what I found in the Spirit-led life? It actually makes me more into the natural world than I would have been otherwise. Let me explain. When I live a Spirit-filled life, Spirit of God loves me too much to let me lie to myself. The Spirit of God loves me too much to go into a relationship and blame it on the other person. When I walk away, the Spirit of God goes, you too, you too. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit-led life does a lot of things, and we're going to discover what those are all throughout 2025. It's powerful. It's amazing. I would not want to pastor a church without the leading of the Holy Spirit and having discernment about where to get involved, how to pray, what to say to certain people. I'm not talking about that at the moment. We'll get to that in 2025. But what I'm talking about is the Spirit-led life makes you more natural. The other thing that we're going to be doing in 2025 involves the card that's on your seat. I'm going to ask that you would take that out. The other thing that we're going to do as a church family is the leadership of City Church for several years behind the scenes has been praying about, seeking God for, and asking God for the right time for us to build a new facility. And so what we're going to be doing is 
we are going to be building a facility to my left, your right, and we're going to be moving towards that in 2025. You're going to hear more about it, but the leadership of City has spent a couple of years behind the scenes planning and getting ready for us to make this move. While you're sitting here in the sanctuary, you might have no way of knowing this, but almost every Sunday morning, for us to have a Sunday morning service here in this building, we are on four different properties. 60% of our parking is next door at KTEC. Our middle school grades one through five meet at a leased gymnasium across the street at Harvest Church. We lease their gym every single Sunday morning so we have enough room for kids. And then again this morning, we rented a large room at the center, the senior center, about a mile from here in Belvedere. And so what happens on a Sunday morning is parents come with their children, the smaller kids go downstairs, they either walk or drive their kids across the street to rent because we lease Harvest Gym. We have people this morning that were in a class at the center because we have no place to put the kids and the courses and the classes we need to have in this building. And so we're literally on four properties almost every Sunday morning. And so you're gonna hear more about this as 2024 moves towards 2025. But in 2025, we're gonna move towards building a building so that we can have everything that we need on this piece of property because two of those entities that we use every Sunday morning eventually is going to go away. We will no longer have access to them. And so what we want to do, it's not because we're control freaks. It's because we need to have the sense of control over the ability to minister to our congregation as it's growing. It's about being healthy is really what it is. And so I'm just letting you know that as we move towards 2025, we're going to be talking about this facility that will be built right next to this one. Now, if you have questions, there's not a lot on the website yet, but that's what this card is for. There's a QR code, you can click on it, and basically it'll take you to a website that just shared everything I just shared. But as we move towards 2025, there's gonna be more information made available. We're gonna to begin to meet and answer questions that people might have, but I'm just letting you know that as a church family, we're going to be spirit-led this next year, and we're going to grow together. Literally, the goal is so we can grow together on this piece of property instead of having to be on four different properties every Sunday morning. Would you stand with me? As we stand together, I'd like you to take a moment and close your eyes in God's presence. As you do that, you may have never done this before. Maybe you're one of those people who, when you hear about the Holy Spirit, you're like, no, 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 no. I, I've got to be able to deal with the real world. I promise you being open to the Holy Spirit actually helps you deal and live in the real world. But maybe for the first time ever, you're here and you would begin to open up your heart and your life to the Holy Spirit. That there's a God who wants to dwell in you and to lead you in life. Lord, we stand in your presence. We ask that we would be a people who are led by the Spirit. God, help every woman and man that's here to begin to be open to you in this way.